Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Take two here. <laughs> yes, take two. Take two, yeah, uh, on the other computer. So this one might echo. Um, we just got done with this video, and then all of a sudden, it just, the whole computer froze. And uh, then when I looked to see if we had captured the video, we did not. So, you know, again, we've been through this so many times for almost four years now. And you could read this statement from the secretary, and we have talked about this in the last video a little bit. The thing that's interesting, too, is like, like this person says, 11th or so tweet about the flock of seagulls? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is this preparation for a last minute? You remember that song? War. What's it good for? Absolutely nothing. Say it again. Absolutely nothing. Yeah, interesting. Uh, l very, very interesting what's going on because, yeah, it has been. There's been like a countdown of sorts going on. And we look at Disclosed TV, and what do we got? We got darkness. And this is, you guessed it, mm -hmm. it's in a flock of seagulls <laughs> city. Yeah. They ran so far away. Yes. They, they couldn't get away. They couldn't escape the darkness. I know. It's sad. I worry. I feel bad for them. I do. Caused major traffic jams. Uh, most definitely inconveniences. Interesting, isn't it, that we just saw a major situation like this in Pakistan? Mm -hmm. As I've shared with you guys, if there was a situation where there was a third global conflagration, uh, on one side you would have R-U-S-S-I-A, along with the fine fine dining ware, mm -hmm. C-H-I-N-A. And then you would have Pakistan. You would have a flock of seagulls standing right there by their side. Mm -hmm. um, you'd also probably have North Korea involved. You also more, li more than likely would have Cuba and Venezuela on that side. And you might find some, some, a well, some African nations as well. Because that's one of the things that I think people are... Um, mostly not aware of is what's going on over in Africa. And here again, we see initial reports of a blackout affecting several cities in a uh, flock of seagulls, as we were saying. You gotta be careful because last video got demonized too. It's gotta be a pain in the butt driving home with no traffic lights, no lights, period. And as we had said before, the people or just caught in the middle, you know, any of us could have been born over there, and then we'd be on this other side of the fence. And perhaps we would be looking over this way and saying, what is wrong with those people? You know, what are, why are they doing this? Coincidentally, there was rumors that there was going to be a Israel strike today, and so there was, and this is in Syria. This is pretty close, well, maybe like 50 miles, I would guess, away from the border with Iraq. And so, yeah, there was an Israel strike. As foretold by quite a few. It's scary warfare that we see nowadays when all you see is just a light in the sky and then it's just poof. And as we see over here, they were reporting just about uh, a million people without power. As you can see, things are underway where you see the little icons here. We have uh, strikes going on. And here you see confirmed vehicles belonging to the uh, Flock of Seagulls Republican Guard. <laughs> uh, it's destroyed by... Israeli aircraft and airstrikes in Bukamal. At least 10 airstrikes in total, but could be uh, as high as 15, six locations hit. It was interesting, too, that we were talking about the fact that the secretary was seen having dinner with the head of Mossad, which you guys may know as the Israeli Secret Service. Mm -hmm. And that's really curious that they were doing that. I know. A little airstrike with your uh, steak over there, Mr. Yeah. Secretary. The little something on the side there. Yeah. 
past the gray poupon with the mustard gas. They probably talk like that, too. They very well might. They very well might. So here you see Charles Lister's reporting uh, 8 to 20 strikes that hit a con convoy and some militia facilities as well. And again, this is in Iraq. And as we've been saying in Iraq and Syria, yeah, it's just a mess. It's a tinter cake. You got too many different people in involved. <laughs> this one must have re-upped. That little guy is ready to go at it, and and he's cute too. He's saying, "See what I got? See what I got?" They trained them too young, guys. They trained them too young. Something tells me he could have been a peaceful boy. I know he looks like he's such a cute pup. Look at that. <coughs> so you know. We might as well bring it up. Countries attacked by bombing, sabotage, or attempted government overthrow since World War II. Hmm. Yeah. We don't see, you know, a flock of seagulls. I always thought they were peaceful. Well, I, I thought so too, but, you know, times change. Yeah. But when we look on the other side, wow, that's a lot of action. That is a lot of action. You know, how can you not recognize all that? I don't know. It's pretty in your face. It's totally in your face. I wonder if we'll see the blue helmets in a place near you and me. I hope not. I hope not. But people have had those visions. So you see UN peacekeepers and government forces repel attacks as Maine Cameroon car trade road reopened. There is so much activity going on in Africa right now with so many countries involved that are not African countries. I don't know what to say about that, really. And, you know, you look at Sudan. Sudan was on the list. You know, there's been uh, activity down in both the Democratic Republic of the Congo and the Republic of the Congo. And it's just sad because there's a power play going on and... You have different groups inside the countries that are vying for power. And, of course, then you have the power brokers that come to them, whisper deals in their ear. you know. And China has done such a job with loaning out vast sums of money. And then when countries can't pay, it's like the landlord comes, comes when, you know, hey, the money's due. You can't pay. All right. Mm -hmm. Get out. We're taking over. Or, or just, you know, stay put and become... The servants, mm -hmm. you could go get us that gray poupon for the steak and the mustard gas. Mm -hmm. Th you know, this is what's been going on, and it's it's about getting the lands that are going to be producing food uh, under your control, as well as other natural resources. Pretty pathetic, but that's the way it goes. It is true, guys. So let's send out a prayer for peace. Let's send out... The prayer that the darkness, the plague upon the land will be lifted, that people will wake up and say, hey, no more. You know, we recognize that we are being played for fools and we're not going along with it anymore. But it's really going to take the people that are behind the military forces to do that. It's going to take people saying, you know, maybe, you know, I shouldn't go in and quote-unquote serve the country when, you know, in the case of perhaps one of these countries here, you're just serving a warlord. That's it. Who is ultimately going to be serving, you know, either the powers that be that lie in certain, you know, European families or perhaps serving, you know, the uh, president for life over in CHINA who ultimately, again, is serving those powers that be, whether that most people recognize it or not. You know, the highest ones we see are still, they still have strings attached to their backs. Mm -hmm. I know, it's pretty pathetic, but it's true. So, be aware, guys, something may happen between now and uh, the big day in D.C. Very well could happen, so have a plan and be prepared. Hopefully everybody has... Uh, six months worth of food and water, medical supplies, what have you. As always, please make sure you're subscribed. And thanks for your support on Ko-Fi and Patreon. God bless and namaste. Namaste.